So after Hurricane Sandy, waterfronts all along the shore were devastated. And while each state has their own initiatives for rebuilding the waterfronts, the New York City Economic Development Board had a competition called the Change the Course, in which individuals and companies could come together and pitch ideas and develop them. And so today, we have the winner, Christopher Labello from D-Shape, um, and he's going to tell us a little bit about the project that his company came up with. Uh, so the project we're working on is to renovate uh, Pier 40 and Pier 17, uh, specifically under the tin building. Um, the piers and the piles that are supporting the piers are in terrible shape. So what we're doing is uh, providing structural reinforcements and uh, uh, encasements to protect any further damage to the piers. So the way we're doing this is through 3D printing encasements. Uh, the way encasements are currently done is having fiberglass sheathing that will go around and then they'll pump that full of concrete. What we're doing is saving the labor costs by having uh, prefabricated 3D printed encasements that will fit perfectly around the piles that are in place right now so that we can put more in for less money. Very nice. So part of the competition was actually a grant that you guys yeah. received, correct? Uh, for this we won 50 grand to start developing our uh, material and get the technology rolling a little further. Uh, we should have a printer built in New York by this summer. Wow, so that's quick. And you guys actually have the largest 3D printer in the world, right? Yeah, uh, it's the largest in the world and the only one that uses this method for printing concrete. And we have two in Pisa, Italy. But as soon as we have funding, we're gonna be building one in New York. That's great, so you guys have a lot to look forward to. Oh, oh very much. much. Now, with, when it comes to 3D printing, there's been a lot of stuff in the news, you know, people making prosthetics, people making cars, colonizing the moon, but all of this had to start from somewhere. And you actually have one of the first 3D printers that were made. And he actually brought one of his printers here today. So we're gonna take a look at it for people who've never seen one, who have no idea what this technology is. Let's give them a little look at what to expect. Okay, sure. Um, well, you start with a 3D model, and then you use a program like Slicer or Replicator G, and it uh, cuts your 3D model into a bunch of two-dimensional layers. Every time it lays down a layer, it moves up a little bit, and then does it over and over again. And as you do this repeatedly, it builds up the 3D model for you. So here is printing two heart boxes that interfit, and uh, you can see the path that the tool head has to take. So by stacking thin layers of plastic, over and over again, you can get the full-size model in 3D. Now, you guys won't actually be making, you know, the piers mm -hmm. with plastic, right? No, they won't be made out of plastic. We made out of concrete. Um, what we do with the concrete, instead of uh, extruding a little bit of concrete, we lay down a, a layer of concrete powder. Then we uh, put down a uh, mixture that uh, binds the concrete together into a stone and then we put down another layer of powder and as we do this over and over again we can build up a model in concrete in 3D of basically any shape that you want. Well thank you Chris. It's great being able to see this technology being used on a large scale. We're excited to see where D-Shape is going in the next couple months as they try to reshape the waterfront. Oh yeah really, I look forward to it. Yeah and being able to really help people so. Thank you. Yeah thank you.